So I want to go over a very uh, powerful tool when doing counting problems. Um, when it works, it works really well and it's very visual. Um, you do have to be careful about situations, certain situations, and I'll, I'll talk about those after I go through the method itself. Um, but when it works, it, it works really well. So the first question here is, if we're taking these six digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9, and we're trying to create four-digit numbers, so numbers between 1,000 and 9,999, um, how many different four-digit numbers are there if our digits can repeat and there's no other, no other restrictions? Well, if I think about writing out these four-digit numbers, I mean, I could, I could start writing them here. I couldn't start with zero, but I could start off maybe with um, maybe start off with 1,000 would work. 1,001 would be good. Uh, eventually I'd get up to maybe 3,890 and so on, all the way down to my, my last one would be 9,999 because I could use, notice that all of these digits are, are from the six that I'm allowed to, to use. So if I were to go down, if I were to create this entire list, it would be pretty huge, uh, but I could do it. It's, it's tangible. I can, I can make a list like that. And I would look at the first numbers. Uh, there's really only five different numbers that are possible because the zero is not possible. The zero would make it less than a four digit number. It would make it less than 1000. So what I'm saying to myself is I have five different choices here. This could be a one, two, three, eight, or nine. But instead of writing down the actual possibilities, what I do is underneath this slot, I write down how many, how many different options I have. And this is, you can think of it as step one of a multiplication process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series of choices and any way through that pathway of choices would give me a solution to this. In other words, a, a four digit number where the digits can repeat. So, okay, I've chosen my first number. It could have been any one of these five. How many choices do I have for the second digit? Now, here's, here's where this method could break down. If the number of choices I have here depends on what my first choice was, then I shouldn't directly use this slot method that I'm showing you right now. Um, I, I should probably try to use something else, or maybe I can break it into cases and do the slot method with each case. Uh, but if you ever get to a slot where you're trying to figure out the number of possibilities for that slot, and you realize that the number really depends on what you chose previously, then uh, you should look for a, a different method or alter it. But here, regardless of which number I chose, I'm going to have six choices. Maybe I'll do this in red so we can see it a little better. Six choices. Now, notice that um, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter which numbers I'm allowed. What I'm looking for in the slot method is how many choices I have. Um, uh, and we'll get more into that in, in part B. Let me continue with this here. So then for the third digit of my number, I would have six more possibilities because I could repeat any of the things I've chosen already and six. Why six here and five here? Well, after the first digit, any of these can be zero. So since I created this step-by-step -step process, I now have five times six times six times six. This gives me five times six to the third um, number, uh, four digit numbers that that follow these parameters. In other words, that, that pull from the digits in, in these uh, six options. Okay. Um, now I could draw that out. You could also think of it as a tree. Like when I'm creating the first slot, I have, you know, I could be going to a one, a two, a three, an eight or a nine. And then for my second number from each of those, I'd have six different options. So here would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9. And then I'd have that again for each of those 30 options and, and so on. And so if I would follow this tree out, it would give me 1, 0, 0, 0. So the very first result following those branches would be 1,000. 
And then the very last one, if I followed all these branches out, would be 9,999. So again, it's just a shortcut way of, of processing this, this decision here. Let's move on to the second one. So what if I'm not allowed any repeats? Well, the first, first digit really doesn't matter, right? I'm, I'm still going to have five different options here. Um, everything but the zero. Zero is still not an option to me. But step two, here's what I really want to focus on. So step two, how many different options would I have for my second digit? Well, the particular options I would have depend on what I chose here. For example, if I chose a one in step one, so I'm going to have a number in the 1000s, I could only choose a two, three, eight, nine, or zero for, for step two. But if I choose a two in this first step, then I would also have the addition of a one as an option here, but now I couldn't have a two as my second option. So the reason why this method still holds is because the number of possibilities at step two doesn't depend on what I chose in previous steps in, in this first step. Now the particular values that I would choose, that does uh, depend, that, that is affected by what I chose here. But in terms of the number of possibilities, there's going to be five. So I have six different options. I could use any of those six except whatever number it was that was chosen initially. That's what I have to avoid here. So that gives me five possibilities. And then I move to this one, same idea. I'd have any, any of the six possibilities except for whatever was chosen here and whatever was chosen here, which have to be different. So that, that means there's only four left and then three left. And that's how I get my answer. Five times five times four times three. 300 different uh, four digit numbers would follow that pattern. Uh, here, the number has to be even, repeats okay. Um, so here's what, instead of starting here, what, what would happen if I started here that the number has to be even? Well, I would have a five right here. Um, actually, I, I can do that because repeats are okay. So because repeats are okay, let's just still go left to right. So everything but the zero, anything's possible, anything's possible. And here, because the number has to be even, I have to make sure it ends in one of the even numbers. Uh, which just gives me the three. So multiply those across and I get 540. Again, at any one of those four steps, the number of possibilities I could choose does not depend on previous choices, previous steps. Okay, now here it's a little trickier, odd, no repeats. So let me go through first an incorrect way of doing this, odd, no repeats. Well, I could set up my slot diagram and I might say, well, the first number would have five possibilities, and that's true. There's nothing wrong with that. There would be every possibility except the zero there. And then I, I'd go here. I'd have all six except whatever I put there. So that would give me five. Here I'd have anything except what I put on the first two. So that would give me four. So, so far it's looking very similar to part B. And nothing that I've done so far has been incorrect. The problem gets to when I choose this last one and I say the number has to be odd, so it has to end in a one, three, or nine. So how many options do I have? Well, it depends. If I used a one already, then I don't have that as an option here. Maybe I used the one, three, and the nine, and I have zero options here. Maybe I just used the one and the nine, and I have one option. Maybe I haven't used any of the odds yet, and I have three options left. Anytime you get to a step and you're trying to figure out how many there are, and your answer is, well, it depends on what happened previously, that's where we have to come up with a different approach. Uh, we could break it into cases, perhaps, but in this case, there, there's an easier, easier way to do it. And that's what I put down here, the order of choosing. Because look what happens. If I choose the last number first, well, that one definitely, there's three choices, right? There's three odd numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. And now I move up to the front. Well, it can't be zero uh, just for the same reason that the, the other ones couldn't have been zero. And it also can't be whatever this odd number was, which isn't zero, by the way. Zero is not odd. So there's two numbers that are now off limits. I know that there are two numbers. Zero is off limits, and whatever this odd number here is off limits. 
that gives me four possibilities remaining. Then I can move here. Realistically, I could move, I could move to the this digit here. It, it doesn't matter at this point, but let me just keep it simple. I'll go to the, the second digit. Well, here I can use anything I want other than the odd digit that was chosen here and the first digit that was chosen here. So that leaves me four. And then this third digit could be anything except the other three that have been chosen. So that's how I get my three there. Now, what would have happened here is you would have had to split it in different situations. So you could have uh, split it into four cases. If there were zero odds chosen, one odd chosen, two odds chosen, or three odd chosen so far. And if you break it into the cases, calculate each one separately, and then add them all up, you will get the same answer. It's just much more labor intensive to do it that way. And you really have to be thinking about what you're doing. So four times four times three times three gives me 144 here. Um, and whenever you can, try to make sense of it. Um, so when I had no repeats, that was my only restriction. I had 300 options. Does it make sense that with odd no repeats, um, I would be a little less? Yes, that, and that, that makes sense. Does it make sense that I'm not exactly one half? Why, if it's no repeats, both of them are no repeats, this is all of them, this is just odd, and there's half of the numbers are odd, why wouldn't my number just be 150? Well, that gets into the fact that I couldn't use zero in the first digit, so it kind of eliminated zero as an option. If I could have used zero in, this, in the first digit, uh, then this number would have been exactly half of this number. But since that wasn't an option, it threw it off by just a little, but it's still roughly half, which, which makes sense. Okay, final one, at least one odd digit. Um, let me double check what this is actually asking. I'm trying to read my own hand. Okay, so yeah, the, the restraint is at least one odd digit and um, they can repeat. I should have put that in there too for my own benefit. Okay, so what, what do we do here? Well, let's think about that. Um, could we do the same slot method just directly? At least one odd digit. Well, I guess you would have five options here. Uh, and then it, digits can repeat, so maybe six and six. And here, how many options do you have? Well, it depends. Um, have you already used an odd digit or, or haven't you? Um, so it's, it's a little bit tricky at this point. So let's think about a different way of approaching it. Um, let's think about the negation. What's, what's the opposite of at least, so at least one odd digit, we could do either one odd digit. So we could do case one, one odd, case two, two odds, exactly two odds, case three, exactly three odds, and case four, exactly four odds. If we calculated how many numbers were in each of these four categories, the, each of these is giving us a set of solutions. So each one is giving up maybe 201, maybe there's 130 in the next one, whatever. So because these are mutually exclusive, you can't be in more than one case. And because they would cover all the solutions, we could just add these up and that would give us an answer. But there's a much easier way. Let's think about having zero odds, zero odds. If we could figure that out, then we could just subtract from the total number of four digit numbers. And that would be the total of all of, all of these right here. We're getting the complement instead of the number directly. Well, we already know the total number, that, that was part A. So this is the total number of four digit numbers. And then we do how many have no odd digits? Well, you could go through a, a slot process. There's two options here, two even numbers that aren't zero. And then you would have three even numbers, three even numbers, three even numbers. So these are, of the total solutions, these are the ones that do not meet the criteria. They don't have any odds. And so here, if I subtract these, all the ones that are not a solution from all the possibilities, I get the number um, that have at least one 
uh, digits. So I'm using the complement rule as a shortcut. 